Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you join us today, and I want to welcome every one of you to Kids Connection. I miss you guys so much, and I can't wait for you to be here at Kids Connection again. But until then, I hope you are still being good boys and girls at home. Last week, we celebrated Easter, and we even had communion with Pastor James. What an amazing experience that was. It was very emotional remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross, for me and for you. Now this week, we're going to continue the story after Easter. But before we get there, we're going to sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. And it's amazing. Sing with us. Wow, that was such a fun song. Did you have fun? I did. And thank you for singing with us. It's always good to know that you enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. 
Thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching this program right now. We ask that you be with them, be with mom and dad, and be with us as we worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have your mom or your dad or your grandparents baked bread at home for you. Yummy! That smell of fresh bread is awesome! In our mission story today, we're going to hear a story where people use fresh baked bread to share the love of Jesus with others. Let's watch our mission story. In the still, dark, and early mornings, flour and water meet. They rise with yeast and are shoved in an oven to be transformed by heat. The aroma fills the air, sending an irresistible invitation to mouth-watering delights. One by one, people come to order, to socialize, and laugh. Every day, people of all ages and different ethnicities line up at this bakery, eager to savor delicious bread. Making bread takes time and patience. It takes loving hands to mix ingredients and press them together until the dough is ready to rise and grow. So it is with people. It takes time and patience to cultivate trust and friendship, to warm their lives and invite them to follow Jesus. At the Trapezia Global Mission Urban Center of Influence in Bulgaria, staff members offer visitors more than food. Here, people find room to interact and participate in a variety of courses and activities. As they make new friends, visitors are invited to become volunteers themselves. This way, they can give back and help others too. Dimitur is a regular volunteer who found purpose in Trapezia by tutoring math. There are good people here, and I developed good relationships with different people. So I want to give my best to others. I feel a strong desire to learn more about God and the Bible. I have this idea that I have to help, and if I can, I'm going to do it. I am not a math teacher. I'm an engineer. But here, I help kids with math. Dimitur travels 10 kilometers every day. Sometimes he comes on foot. He started as a customer, then he became a volunteer, and now he is a baptized Seventh-day Adventist. Like Dimitur, many people who come to Trapezia find the bread of life. The owners of Trapezia have seen how centers of influence like this can work as a platform to engage the community and form friendships God gave us this place to keep us close to people. God showed us that we needed a place where people felt accepted and at home. That's why we established a bakery, because it smells like home. In Bulgaria, people eat a lot of bread. This is how Christ worked. He was close to people. He offered them the bread of life. He healed them and took care of them. And we want to do the same. The leaders at Trapezia invite you to pray for this growing group of new believers. Please pray for this urban center of influence and many others around the world that find creative ways to introduce people to Jesus. Thank you for supporting urban centers of influence through Global Mission. Now as always, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link above and donate to the missionaries. Now our offering this Saturday is going to help places like the bakery so they can continue to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, how have you been doing? What are you doing at home lately? Are you enjoying a new way of school or spending some time with mom or dad or grandparents? I know that some of you don't go to school yet, but in a way, we're all experiencing something different. Just remember something, you're always on my mind. I miss you guys. And I am so happy that we get to spend this time at Kids Connection every week. Don't forget to come back to the Kids Connection page later in the week and check out additional material just for kids. We have new videos for children's worship, fun activity pages, and much more. After you watch today's video, just scroll down to the bottom of this page where you can see a lot more to do. 
Now, last week we learned in our Sabbath school the story of Easter and that Jesus died and rose again. Today we're going to learn what happened after that, after his resurrection. But before we get to that, I think my friend Claudio is here. It was his birthday last week, and let's see what he has to say. Come on. Well, hello, boys and girls. Here, I want you to meet my friend Claudio. Hi, Claudio. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thanks for coming here today. I hear that you had a birthday party last week. Yes, I had a birthday party. Oh, that's that. Birthdays are, are the best. Did you get a lot of presents? Yes, lots of presents. Good, good. I'm so excited, so happy for you. Happy birthday, by the way. What did you get? Lots of presents. Oh, really? Okay, okay. And and what was your favorite? Mm, I, it was a soccer ball. Oh, really? Oh, soccer is my favorite favorite i love soccer do you have your ball with you yes i do can i see it no no why because it's mine oh i know it's yours i know it's yours but i i, I just want to see it because it was your favorite and i want to see it no oh come on claudio let me see boys and girls do you want to see his soccer ball mm. Just a little bit. Can we see it just for a little bit? Mm, okay. But it's mine. Oh, I know. I understand. It's your ball. Okay. Do you need help? Mm, 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 mm. Okay. He doesn't need help. I think you do need help. No. Whoa, that is such a nice ball. Can I touch? No. Oh, no. Mm -mm -mm. It's mine. I, I know it's yours, but I, I like to see. I like to kick the ball. I like to bounce the ball a little bit. Can I do that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, Claudio. Okay, but you know, it's, it's much better when we play soccer with two people. No, uh, but it's mine. It's. I understand. It's your ball. It's your ball, and and it's a nice ball. Mm. Claudio, can can we try to play together? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Okay, Claudio, I I, I know. I'm not gonna take the ball from you. I just want to play with you because I like soccer. No, I don't think so. Yes, Claudio. I promise I'm not going to take it from you. Promise? Oh, really? Oh, thank you, Claudio. Okay. Okay, okay. So you kick it to me, and I'll kick it back to you, and I'll hit it back to you, okay? Here we go. Oh. Whoa. It is such a nice ball. Thank you. Here we Here. go. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Claudio. Oh. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Okay, Claudio, I'm going to hit it to you. You hit your head, okay? Okay. Oh, cool. That was nice. Here, let me try it. Ah, ah good catch. Good catch. See, Claudio, wasn't it nice to play together? I guess. Yeah, it's always nice to play soccer together because... You know, when you play by yourself, you have to run after the ball. You have to chase it. Sometimes you kick the ball far away. And when you play with someone, you kick that ball to the person, and the person kicks back to you. That wasn't that bad, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't take your ball, like I promised. Yeah, I guess you didn't. Yes, Claudio. Thank you for letting me play with you. And happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Bye. It was good seeing you, Claudio. Bye-bye. I'll see you later. Okay. Say bye-bye to the boys and girls. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday. 
Wow, did you guys see that? Claudio didn't want to share his soccer ball with me. He thought I was going to take his ball. Have you ever seen anybody who doesn't like to share things or that knows something so good and they don't want to share with anybody? In today's lesson, we're going to learn something that we don't want to keep it to ourselves. Something that we need to share with everyone. And I hope you don't do like Claudio. Keep it to yourself. I hope that today's lesson you shared with at least one person this week. Just one. And now, let's sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for all the boys and girls, and moms and dads who are watching this program today. Bless them, keep them safe, and thank you so much because you died on the cross for us. Help us to share this love with others, with at least one person this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program. 
and share the lesson you're about to hear with at least one person this week. We have a lot of things happening at our Kids Connection page. So make sure you come back this week and check out additional materials on the bottom of this page, graceandcondition.com forward slash Kids Connection. We have crafts, we have safe games for kids and children's worship new videos. And all this is specially made for you. I hope to see you again next week for another Kids Connection program. Thanks for watching today. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Hello. Happy Sabbath and welcome to our early teen Sabbath school. Um, I hope that you've all been well. Good to be here today and to lift up our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I hope that you've all um, you know, been able to access our Sabbath school lessons and I hope that you're staying close to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, through these uh, difficult and troubling times. But our Lord is always with us. He promises never to forsake us and to lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And no matter where we might go, um, Jesus will be there um, as our guide if we allow him. And let's pray together before we start today's lesson. Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to be here with our friends um, in spirit, though not physically. But we know, Lord, that where two or three are gathered together, that you promise to be with us. And so, no matter how many are here, um, we pray, Lord, that this uh, lesson <coughs> will touch our hearts and show us what a great God you are, how powerful. Uh, your son, Jesus Christ, was and that he conquered death and sin through the resurrection from the dead. And may this um, be a hope for all of us that we will be reunited with our Lord soon when he comes and returns for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my friends, um, last uh, week was Easter. And of course, we know that means that Jesus Christ didn't stay in the tomb, but that he actually has risen. And that's why we have a hope in him. That's why we, we pray to, uh, to the Father through Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus is God. He's not like the rest of us subject to death anymore. He's conquered death. And today we're gonna to take a look at the resurrection story. And let's get right into it. Uh, Jesus, our risen King. So the true story of the first Easter took place around 2,000 years ago, but from the very beginning, God had a plan to save sinful people. So at just the right time, God sent his only son, Jesus, to the earth. Jesus grew up and began to tell people about God's plan. He did many miracles to show his great power and to prove he was God's son. He healed the blind. He healed crippled people so they could walk. He calmed the wind and waves during a terrible storm, and he walked on water. Also, among many of the countless other miracles, Jesus fed over 5,000 people with a boy's small lunch of fish and bread. If you were there the day Jesus did this miracle, what would your reaction have been to seeing such power? After this miracle, would you have followed Jesus, no matter what others said? So we look at the life of Jesus Christ. And we see that he had power which no man previous to him had shown in such a great way. And here he is, um, you know, attending to a young boy. And we know that he healed the sick. He raised people from the dead. He drove out demons. And we know that uh, he is our God. <clears throat> The religious leaders and others, though, refused to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They had in their minds what the Messiah was supposed to look like and what he was supposed to do. They wanted a king who would deliver them from the Roman government. They were jealous of Jesus and his power, so they devised a plan to have him crucified on a cross. It was a horrible, cruel, and painful death. But they did not take Jesus' life. He willingly gave himself because he knew God's plan for our salvation. 
Jesus' followers were sad to see him die and sad to place his body in a tomb. After a big stone was rolled in front of the tomb, and Pilate, the governor in charge, sent soldiers to guard it day and night. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. <clears throat> so, yes, as we learned uh, last Sabbath, um, Jesus was crucified and he did die on the cross. And yes, Pilate, the governor, sent soldiers um, once Jesus was buried to guard the tomb so that no one could say that Jesus, you know, had risen from the dead when he really didn't. Um, however, there's more to the story than Jesus' death. Very early on the third day after Jesus' death, some women were on their way to Jesus' tomb. During biblical times, these women were probably taking the spices and ointments either as an additional show of honor and respect or out of necessity in order to finalize the burial process. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. The angel of the Lord rolled aside the stone and sat on it. The guards fainted in fear. The angel told the women not to be afraid. The angel knew they were looking for Jesus. The angel informed the women that Jesus was not there. He had risen, just as he said he would. And so now it's Sunday morning, early at dawn, and the women come with the spices. And what do they see? They see the stone rolled away from the tomb. They see an angel there, and the tomb is empty. And the angel says that Jesus is not there, that he has risen. And what a marvelous and, you know, and awesome um, news this was. They didn't really know what to make of it. And uh, this was going to be a big surprise for his disciples as well. The angel told the women to go look in the tomb. Then they were to go quickly and tell the disciples what they had seen and that Jesus would meet them in Galilee. As the women ran from the tomb, filled with excitement and fear, they met Jesus. They ran to him, fell at his feet, and worshipped him. Jesus repeated the angel's message for the disciples. He would prove to them that he was alive. So when the women reached the disciples and told them what they had seen, what do you think their reaction was? Well, they wondered if the women's words could really be true. Peter and John raced to see for themselves. John reached the tomb first, but Peter rushed into the tomb first. They saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, folded separately. Before, they had not fully understood Jesus' words about coming alive again, but now they had seen the empty tomb with their own eyes. And here we see uh, John outside the tomb and Peter came in first, and they're looking at the burial clothes. And they notice they've been folded and neatly placed, and there's no body. And so now they are you know, wondering, you know, if what they were told is true by, by the women. Unfortunately, the guards at Jesus' tomb were bribed to say the disciples had come during the night and stolen Jesus' body. In the evening of that same day, the disciples gathered in a locked room for fear of what might happen to them. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the room and said, peace be with you. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and side. All the worries, sadness, and disappointment from Jesus' death were gone. To say they were filled with joy to see Jesus alive would be an understatement. As mentioned earlier, the first Easter took place around 2,000 years ago, but from the very beginning, God had a plan to save the person you saw in that mirror and for all people throughout all times. Jesus' followers were never the same after seeing Jesus alive and realized who he was and his power over death. So here Jesus appears in the room. Um, I believe it was... Uh, just 10 of the disciples, so Judas Iscariot had committed suicide, and Thomas was not in the room at this, uh, at this time. But Jesus shows them the nail marks in his hands, and as they look at him, they realize that this is their Lord and Savior, and they were amazed and filled with great wonder and joy because of it. You or I could say that we could do many things, but our actions prove our words. Well, Jesus' actions proved his words. Before he died, Jesus said to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and that he would be killed. He would then be raised the third day. When Jesus came alive after being dead for three days, he proved he was who he said he was, the Son of God. No one but God has power over life. 
The Bible declares that by being raised from the dead, Jesus proved to be the mighty son of God. There is no one who has ever lived who is like Jesus, the risen king. And this is true, that we worship Christ, the risen king, because he's just that. He has the power over death and the grave. The religious leaders who had Jesus killed may have thought they had defeated Jesus. The devil may have thought Jesus was defeated. Even some of Jesus' followers thought Jesus had been defeated through death. But no, Jesus was a conqueror, a winner. A conqueror defeats his enemies and wins over them. When Jesus came alive after being dead for three days, he conquered three things. So first, Jesus conquered sin. As Jesus came to earth with a mission of saving people from their sin. Since the first sin in the Garden of Eden, God promised to send someone to save us. The resurrection proved Christ's power to forgive sin. And by, raising, by rising from the dead, Jesus proved his authority and power to defeat sin and to give forgiveness and eternal life to all who accept his gift of salvation. We are no longer slaves to sin. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. We've been given a new life with his spirit living in us. Second, Jesus conquered death. Jesus' resurrection showed his power over death. The Bible says Jesus rose from the dead and will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Death is our enemy, though, and the punishment for each person's sins. When someone dies, we feel sad. As followers of Jesus, we don't have to fear the punishment that comes after death. Because of Jesus' victory over death, those who follow him will live again. Even if we have to suffer and face sadness in this life, we know that one day we will enjoy a perfect life with Jesus. Just like God gave Jesus a resurrected body, God will one day give all believers perfect resurrected bodies to live forever with him. And third, Jesus conquered the devil. Jesus' resurrection defeated God's biggest enemy, from the moment when the devil rebelled against God in heaven, he has fought against God and worked to overthrow God's kingdom. The devil must have thought he won when Jesus was placed on the cross and then finally in the tomb. But instead of the cross being a loss, it was God's greatest victory. When Jesus died and came alive again, he defeated the devil. At the end of the world, the devil and his followers will be punished forever and there will, no more, or there will be no more temptation to sin. You know, it's easy to feel defeated when we are going through difficult times, but we can use what we've learned today to remember the devil does not win against those who follow Jesus. In the end, Jesus won, and his followers, that's us, we win. We can celebrate the risen king because he won over sin, he won over death, and he won over the devil. And that is such exciting, incredible news for us to share. Who are some people you can tell about Jesus' death and resurrection? Your next step is to share the good news that Jesus is a risen king with those around you. And of course, victory in the cross, victory over death, victory over sin, victory to now um, live a new life um, in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so my friends, as we contemplate um, the risen king, let's realize that He's alive today. He reigns in, in heaven. He sits at the right hand of God in the heavenly realms. And he's, uh, his life, he wants to give to us, his resurrected life, a life of victory over the sin and over uh, the devil. So my friends, take it in faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that you have his perfect life to live through you and in you. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a great message today about the resurrected King, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we put our faith and hope and trust in him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that no one cometh unto you, Father, except through him. And so go with us now as we um, go from this place and may we bring the news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the victory over sin and death and the devil to others who need to hear this so that they too may put their faith in the only Savior, our only 
wise God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. And so, my friends, go forth uh, this week with the knowledge that you too have a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's go in victory with a smile on our face. Uh, God bless you all until we see each other again.